Welcome back. We're here with Chaz from Luminate and Ray from Stipple. And my question to you gentlemen is, uh, what are the installation options? How do these services really work? Let's start with Ray. Um, in order for uh, a layer of information to be delivered on any uh, image on the web, you really have two options. At Stipple, uh, ours is all JavaScript based, and the JavaScript base, uh, has to be called in, in one of several ways. Uh, a publisher can do an install, which is very similar to installing Google Analytics or any other JavaScript or tool. Big or Big Lake. <laughs> or any other JavaScript tool that you've installed <laughs> on your site. Um, we also deliver our content through embed codes. So if a publisher wants to experiment with Stipple and just try a photo out without a full install, they can grab a photo's embed code and, and YouTube style, essentially, uh, power it all through an iframe. And, uh, and we also have a browser plugin. And so if a user is going throughout the web and wanting to engage with content, as they explore the web, uh, the user can see stipple content even if a publisher doesn't have it installed. Cool. Thank you. Chad? And, and, and that's it. Luminate, it's similar. It's a, it's a single line of JavaScript that a publisher deploys on, on his or her pages once, and it's a, it's a 15 minute operation. And that then gives the, the, pub, the, the publisher's then done with his or her work. And from there, we, we do all the programming of the images, image by image, and the publisher just selects the applications selects the call to action and the appearance on their own pages, and we do the rest from there. Cool. Thank you. Um, so what trends are you seeing that excite you in the space? I, I mean, I, I, I think the, the image, images in general on the web, I think there are two major trends that I like to see. One of them is, is the explosion of the internet around sharing photographs. So if we think of the major sites that we're talking about today and are seeing most of the growth, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they're primarily about Oh, MySpace image. is having a comeback. And, 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 we're, and we're waiting for the MySpace comeback, <laughs> which will be all about images as well. But so we're seeing one, tr one trend, which is this, this interest that we all have in sharing images with friends across the internet. The other trend that I like to see is, is tagging and curating of images. We're seeing sites like Pinterest who are growing their audiences and growing engagement around people sharing images in a different way. And so we're, we're a very visual species, and the internet is no different than that. And the, the, the growth of, of, of images that we see online, which is on the, on the order of 250 million new photographs a day being uploaded to the internet, we people love our images. And so if we, as, as partners to publishers, can help them turn that consumer enthusiasm for images into ways to, to supplement and support their businesses, we think we can add value to the equation. And how, how are you, um, what's exciting you about what's happening with images? The most exciting thing that we saw in the last 30 or 40 days were uh, new tools that Google has released as, re has released as part of their, their image search product. Mm -hmm. uh, we have long felt that the, the biggest problem plaguing images on the web is the syndication problem. What do I mean by the syndication problem? So if you go to images.google.com, you can drag your favorite image from Pinterest or, or in anywhere in there. And Google will actually tell you how many places on the web that image is live at any given time? If you have a brand, um, you can type in you know, your brand or your product, so Levi's jeans or Zappos shoes, etc. And Google Images will tell you how many of those images, how many image URLs exist on the web today and in how many locations, and then you can constrain it for time. So large brands, say a Zappos, um, 30 million image URLs posted in the last seven days containing a Zappos shoe. Images begin life in a single location, and then they proliferate, they're syndicated throughout the web. And you know, at Stipple, we've been focused on solving the syndication problem. The fact is we see images over and over and over and over again from site to site to site, and then related images from site to site, because if a story's hot, everybody's gotta have an image from the Academy Awards. Everybody's gotta have so-and-so on the red carpet of this event, and an image taken a quarter second apart, they're pretty much the same image. And so the thing that's exciting me is that people can now see how big of a problem syndication is, how far your images travel. A brand can, you know, in three seconds go and look up exactly how big of an audience are their images getting. We're finding retailers that have literally orders of magnitude more traffic on external sites against their image mm. than they have on their own sites. That's and so Stipple's focused on giving those companies control of their images throughout the web, not just on a single publisher site. Interesting. You know, it raises a great question. You both talked about the sort of the scope, you know, 250 million photos added a day. That's, that's a great, Facebook. 
Right. <laughs> that, that's right. a great number. So, so you know, definitely you talked about the, the work of installing your products, but how much work does a publisher have to do to maintain this? Do they have to go tag their images or sort of say what's in their images or author these, these content you know, snippets you talked about? Uh, at, at Luminate, we offer any publisher the option to tag their own images as they'd like, and that can be useful information, but we don't require it. So Luminate is doing the work once the, once the code is placed on a publisher's site, we're doing the work through image recognition, through crowdsource tagging, to understand and interpret that image mm. and light up applications from there. So there's no work for the publisher That's after right. they deploy Luminate. Cool, right? We likewise give publishers the capability to have editorial freedom and control. And it, it's interesting because publishers as a term is very, very broad. Sure. Um, uh, editorially focused publications. Um, they are oftentimes at the G7 summit not interested in selling Barack Obama's necktie or business suit, right? They're trying to <laughs> deliver editorial information, and they're oftentimes trying to self-reference editorial information. So MSNBC is trying to point to other coverage that they have from the G7 summit and other things along those lines. And so it's very self-contained in terms of content authorship, not something that they're doing externally. Then you have other groups of publishers who only want essentially, hey, I want monetized images. I don't want to do any extra work. And we're in the business um, of, of full-time machine tagging products and other interesting photos to give them, uh, give those publishers content that contains everything that they'd hopefully need to be able to see. Cool. What types of publishers are succeeding with this? Who's doing really well with this? Is there anyone you'd like to highlight and said, this is a published application there, they're rocking with this? You know, I, I mean, I, you know, what we're seeing is, is publishers, particularly large publishers, are getting the importance of the, their image investment. They're defining an image strategy, and we're seeing more and more uh, at, at publishers in every vertical a movement from articles with pictures to larger pictures to every article is attached to a photo gallery. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's being driven by consumer interest, consumer demand. And so we're seeing that across the board. And, and uh, to, to, so, so I think a lot of publishers in a lot of different categories are, are getting a, are getting comfortable with the importance of images on their site. We're finding that that uh, different verticals sort of gravitate around different kinds of applications. We work with with VH1, for example, around social sharing applications. We work with entertainment sites around products in the picture applications and around the apparel. Um, but we're seeing success in, across a lot of different verticals these days. Cool. And then Ray, what about video? Um, how is this going? How f how fast are you going to be able to catch up with monetizing images and video? Is that going to happen very quickly, or is that going to take a while? Well, so you know, image tagging as a as an industry, right? And I'm going to start answering your video question yeah. with images because video is nothing but moving images, right? Yeah. 24 or 30 frames a second. Uh, state of the art in uh, in image tagging, um, machines are not at the point that they can accurately tag a complex image. Mm -hmm. right. They just cannot. So if it put the four of us in a photograph, there's not a machine today that could, without seeing a logo, tell his denim from his denim from my denim. It doesn't exist. The technology's not there. I think um, a human being would have a hard time with that. Right, so. Even a human, <laughs> right? so, so a human being can only what they call <coughs> keyword tag, you know, um, and that's blue jeans, right? And then say, hey, here's a blue jean ad. Uh, but if you were really interested in what jeans Justin Timberlake was wearing, you couldn't identify accurately what those things are. So um, the ability to tag a frame in a video mm -hmm. accurately and then extend it to a moving video exists today. Um, the challenge is you have many, 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 many frames and yeah. lots of objects moving in and out of those frames very rapidly. How do you accurately, i.e. scalably, identify all of those objects that come in and out of the frame? So it's a, it is, it is a, it's a problem that you can make very nice demos for, yes. right? You can make it look really, really good, and, and you can show somebody one great-looking demo. Now, the production costs for this three-minute video, that's where everything's tagged and it's all flowing, is like two years, not two years, <laughs> but like yeah. hundreds of hours of production, you know, to go in and make it look good. So that's, that continues to be the problem. I mean, YouTube says we've got, what, 24 hours of video being uploaded every minute of the day into YouTube, mm -hmm. and you've got one three-minute video with 200 hours of production cost to right. tag everything. It doesn't, doesn't math out, right? Yeah. So there's got to be some new technological breakthroughs to make those things happen. I think you'll see computer vision as a discipline continue to mature over the next 10 years uh, in much the same way that there was a massive investment in semantic search and natural language processing, and now computers can read. You know, you can type in a, a string of characters and they return a result instantly. 
you're going to need the same type of investment to continue in computer vision over the next 10 to 20 years to bring about the sort of, you know, anything in a video is magically shoppable and explorable. That'll do it for another episode of The Future of Publishing. I'd like to thank my guests, Ray from Stiffel and Chaz from Illuminate, as well as my co-host Oliver Roop from Viglink. Thank you. See you next time on The Future of Publishing.